Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel. And today I have an amazing video for you. As you must be aware, my master students, they are taking some classes regarding uh, power system stability and dynamic processes and the topic of small signal stability is one of the most important topics. Small signal stability is quite interesting because um, it's the, the capability, is the capacity of the electrical power system of regaining uh, a steady state and equilibrium point after a small disturbance. And this small disturbance is basically a disturbance that is so small that the dynamic processes are still linear. And that is the reason that for a small signal stability, we use a different approach compared with transient stability. When we are interested on the transient stability, the transient rotor angle stability, well, we care about the full differential equation. If we are talking about the dynamic process, we care about the swing equation. And inside the swing equation, there is a term related to the electrical power, and that term is basically the power angle equation where there is a term that is nonlinear. However, here for small signal stability, the situation is a bit different. If you remember my classes regarding the theory, we used the state uh, space representation for the electrical power system, and we can use a very specific tool for uh, analyzing the small signal stability, and that is the modal analysis. The modal analysis is basically this tool that we use to assess the small signal stability, and mathematically, it is based on calculating the state the state matrix of the system or matrix A, and from there we use some mathematical tools, the eigenvalues, to define how the system oscillate. Okay, well. Today, this video is a very short video, but is very, very important for you because today we are dealing with a small signal stability. Okay, but before we go to business, I would like to remind you, please uh, follow my research game repository because over there you will find all my scientific papers, also all my slides and scientific publications, okay? It's not only for me. Remember, ResearchGate is a very important place where many scientists, they, they put over there the papers and you can go for over there and download for free, okay? It's a social media for academic, for scientists. And the interesting thing is also you can make questions over there and you get can get answers, okay? Also, some of those examples that we are running today, they are located, the file is located inside the GitHub repository. Over here, you can see the link. You can go over there to my repository and link it in, and you can download those files, okay? Also, if you are watching this video, it's because you are here in my YouTube channel, in your YouTube channel, and I highly suggest if you want, you can subscribe and you can get updates, okay? Finally, if you are interested to know what is happening around the world in electrical power systems, if you are interested to know more, please follow my um, my social media accounts, in this case, Twitter account and also LinkedIn, okay? But coming back, coming back to the problem, the video today, today we are working a stability of a small signal, uh, we are studying a small signal stability, but in this case, we are using a very simple, system. We are using a system with a single machine. And the topic today is dealing with a small signal stability. And the example that we are following today is the classical single machine infinity boost bar system. Okay. Well, what is the objective? The idea is that today we have a practical example that we want to study, and in this case, we are interested on the small signal rotor angle stability. The system 
is the most basic system. We have been working with this system for many videos. We have been using this system in classes for numerical calculations using hand calculations. And today we are keeping using, we, are, we, we keep using the same system, okay? Today I will do something very different to classical classes, okay? Today I am using two different ways to show you the results, okay? Today I will present two different approaches. When we care about when we care about a small signal stability, when we care about a small signal stability, there are two possible approaches that we can see. Okay? Many people, the classical people, they think about modal analysis as the only tool that you can use for assessing a small signal stability. Classical, classical persons, the classical person, they try to use model analysis, they use model analysis, and Dixie and Power Factory have a very specific common function uh, uh, that is called model analysis, and you can perform the model analysis of any system. To be honest, it's extremely simple, it's a very powerful tool inside Dixie and Power Factory. But also, I will do something that is not typically done, okay? It's not typically done because several things, but today I will do it because I would like to demonstrate my students that time to time you need to think outside the box. And what is the process today? The process today is also beyond the classical model analysis, that is the classical tool to assess the small signal stability. I will do something that is a very different and is using time domain simulation is using time domain simulation in order that you can see also the small signal uh, stability and to be honest this is a very specific example and in this case in this case i am using the time domain simulation and i am using a small disturbance a very small disturbance you will see in a minute in order to excite the oscillatory model in this system and as consequence, I can use the classical time domain simulation, the RMS simulation command inside the Xilin Power Factory in order to assess the performance of the system for this very small disturbance, okay? Well, the situation is very simple. The test system is the classical test system that we have been using for many videos. In this case, in this case, the test system is the classical synchronous generator. You can see here the synchronous generator is connected to a low voltage boost bar. We are talking about 12.5 kV. Then we have here, uh, we have here uh, the step up transformer and we are going to the transmission level, the, volta the, the high voltage transmission level. And we have two transmission lines going to, going to the uh, infinity bus okay remember the transmission system the nominal voltage is 232 and if you remember there is a condition in this system that we are delivering 60 megawatts 60 megawatts to the infinity bus and the power factor is 0 0.8 and it's a lagging power factor okay you must remember because in one of my previous videos, I was very, very careful and I set up this very specific power factor. Okay. Well, but the job today is we want to assess the small signal stability. And to assess the small signal stability, I will start considering the most different approach. Okay. I will start with time domain simulations. Not much people do this because there are several reasons, okay? When you are using time domain simulations, you are using the full differential equation. And one of the problems when you use the full differential equation, okay, you can get the full solution of the system, but it's extremely difficult to know how to excite the very specific mode that it's creating the small signal uh, instability okay in this case because this is a very small system and it's using the classical model for the synchronous generator it's extremely easy for me creating the disturbance that is 
allowing me to show you the basic of small signal stability, okay? In this case, I will start this discussion remembering you we are using the classical model, okay? We are using the Xilin Power Factory 2021, the most recent version. And in this version, you have the possibility of selecting the classical model. When you are using the classical model inside the Xilin Power Factory, you must remember that we use the most simplified model that you can think about. It's the classical model where we have a constant voltage source behind the impedance. And that is true. That is the model that we are using. In this case, the classical synchronous machine model. In this case, there is not uh, there is no dynamic performance related to the electric components. They are only uh, mechanical uh, dynamic behavior. Okay. And also, if you read properly, if you read properly the the technical reference of the synchronous machine inside the Xilin power factory you must remember that there is a specific equation representing the motion the equation of motion for this synchronous machine you must remember this if we are using as generator this is taken from the technical reference you can find the first derivative of the rotor speed is depending of those terms over here. To be honest, those two terms, they are the most relevant for me. The first term is basically the mechanical torque and the other term, the second one that is the negative at the right hand side of the mechanical torque, that is the electrical torque, okay? If you want to learn more about this model, if you want to learn more about this model, you can go inside the technical reference of the Xilin Power Factory and you will find more information. Okay, great. The interesting thing here is I want to excite small oscillations, small, I want to create a disturbance that is small but is exciting the oscillation if of this very small system. And what is the best option for me? Well, the best option for me is going and modifying, slightly modifying, slightly changing the mechanical torque. Okay, and now the plan is to use the time domain simulation in order to simulate uh, a small disturbance. Now what I will do, what I will do is basically uh, do that by a very simple way, okay? Um, Dixie Power Factory has many, many uh, possible events that you can define and one of those events is a very interesting a very interesting uh, event and that is the um, event for synchronous machine and specifically the event for synchronous machine is an event where you can add torque into the mechanical chaff of the synchronous generator and that is the event that I am planning to use for this very specific exercise. What I am telling you is that we have this very interesting um, event that is called Inside Power Factory, it's called Inside Power Factory at Torque. This very important event is an event that allows you to increase the torque inside the synchronous machine. And that is the event that I will be using here in order to excite the small signal stability. And to be honest, what I will do is something extremely, extremely basic, okay? What I will do is I will define two very specific events, okay? One event that is basically an increase of the torque and then one event that is reducing the torque. What is the idea? Well, the machine is working with the torque, the nominal torque, 
and then I will increase slightly increase the torque during a very short time period and then I will decrease the torque okay that is the plan what is the idea um, by doing so the idea is first you need to take in account that the increase in torque will be extremely extremely small as you can see over here it's just 0 0.01 per unit and then I will decrease the torque by um, 0.001 okay and all of this all of this is happening in a very short time period if you can see over here the time difference is only five milliseconds okay what I'm telling you is that I am defining two events. Those two events are basically one event to increase the torque, and then I will reduce the torque. And the idea behind this, the idea behind this is that this very small increase and decrease during a very small time period that will allow me to um, to excite the electromechanical oscillation in this very small system okay then well we need to take in account we need to take in account well then we need to take in account that we need to define those two events okay the first event it will happen at t equals zero and we are increasing the torque by 0 0.01 per unit, okay? That is what I am telling you. This is the first event, and this event is a very small increase in the mechanical torque of the generator. But then we have the event number two, and the event number two is trying to get back the torque at zero, millise at zero milliseconds by reducing the torque by this very small amount and this very small amount is 0 0.0001 okay that is the job the job is that we will increase the power sorry the torque and then after we increase the torque for a very short time period we will reduce we will reduce the torque again okay and then we will perform we will perform the classical time domain simulation the classical rms simulation using the xilin power factory and that is the step number three the step number three here in this example is basically we will collect some information we will collect time series for very specific uh, signals okay to be honest in particular in this case i am really interested on getting the time series for the rotor speed okay because if you remember the electromechanical model of the synchronous machine for the classical model the motion is defined by two state variables one state variable is omega you must remember omega one of the state variable is omega and the second state variable is the rotor angle okay what i'm telling you is that the state vector for modeling the the for modeling the um, electromechanical behavior is basically a model that has two state variables okay in this case i am collecting more variables to be honest in this case i am collecting several variables including active power reactive power uh, including the current and in particular the one that i am really interested in here okay and that is that is basically the rotor speed okay you can see over here that i am collecting the value the time series for this uh, rotor speed okay and now what i will do is i will go to a step number four okay and what is the step number four here the step number four is basically to determine the oscillation frequency okay to determine the oscillation frequency in this very specific event then 
after we uh, calculate here in this video the oscillation frequency what i will do is i will give to uh, a specific task for my students okay what they can do at home is basically calculate the damping of the oscillation you will do that at home calculate the damping of the oscillation and also i will suggest my students to investigate a uh, second disturbance uh, at home my students will investigate what will happen if we have the sudden disconnection of the transmission line number two and from there what we want is that the student will be able to uh, investigate changes at the behavior of the rotor speed okay well but it's clear now we have very clear view what we want to do what we want to do using the excellent power factory and now what i will do is just basically go to power factory and i will show you i will show you the mm, very specific details about the simulation and practical implementation well, right now we are here in the Excellent Power Factory and inside the Excellent Power Factory you will realize that we have the same system that we have been using for uh, the previous videos. In this case, in front of us we have the, the test case and that is the single machine Infinity Bus Bar. And this test system is basically, as I present before, a synchronous generator that is connected to a low voltage bus bar, 11 kV. Then we have this 100 MVA step up transformer going from 11 to 130, uh, 232 kV. Okay. And from there, we have two circuits two transmission lines, overhead transmission lines in, hundred and, uh, in 232 kV rate voltage going to the infinity bus bar and the infinity bus bar is basically 232 kV, okay? That is the system. We have been using this system, this test system for quite a while. Uh, we have been using this for at least three, three or four videos, okay? What I will do now is initially I want to show you that is the same uh, the same the same test system and I want to be sure that the system is properly working and the first step that I will do is just basically run a load flow okay when you run the load flow you will see here that in this system we have the characteristic the pre-contingency characteristic that we were talking about in the previous videos you can see here 60 megawatts and a power factor of 0 0.8 this is a lagging power factor 0 0.8 okay and then if um, if we look over here on the other side you can see the current and the current is 0 0.75 per unit okay that means that we have the original system that we have been talking about. Inside this file, inside this test system, this test system have two, uh, three different study cases. Okay, the study cases, the study case that I am showing you is the base case, and over here you can see the initial conditions, the pre-contingency conditions of this system. Okay. What I will do now is I will go to the RMS simulation and what I will do is activate, activate this very specific test case. Okay. This study case. Okay. Right now you can see that the uh, tools for, uh, for simulations RMS and EMT they are already activated here because this is the study case for RMS simulation. Initially, what I will do is to calculate the initial conditions. Remember that we are using here the simulation method based on RMS values. That is basically the simulation that we do using electromechanical transients. And we are using positive sequence network representation. We calculate the initial conditions 
And just to check here, we are using, remember, we are using here the classical model, the classical model for the synchronous machine. And if we are using the classical model for the synchronous machine, you can see that the internal voltage is 1.247. That is the value that we already calculate by hand in previous videos. And also you can see that the initial rotor angle, the steady state pre-contingency rotor angle is 13.214 degrees, okay? Now we are fine. Now we are ready for the simulations, okay? And what is, what is here the main simulation? Let's go to the main menu and edit the simulation events, okay? And here we have two basic events. As you can see, there are two basic events. There is one event that is called at torque, and the second event is five milliseconds later, and that is reduce the torque, okay? Let me open the first one to show you at torque. As you can see over here, there is an event. This event is happening at t equals zero. And then this event is creating an additional torque in the rotor shaft of 0 0.01 per unit. That is extremely, extremely a small increase in the mechanical torque. And then we have a second event. This second event again is over the synchronous generator and that event is happening at 0 0.05 seconds. Okay, let me open here for you. Double click. And as you can see, this event is happening at 0 0.05 seconds. And in this case, the additional torque is negative. Okay. You must remember when we use negative additional torque, that is a reduction in the in the mechanical torque, okay? And in this case, we are using 0 0.0001 per unit, okay? Well, in this case, in this case, what I want to do is basically increasing the torque in a very small amount and then I will reduce in a very small amount the torque, and this will be done in a very small time, okay? The idea here, the idea here is that we will, uh, we will excite the small oscillation in this system, okay? Now, well, what we need to do is just basically run the initial conditions again, initial conditions, we are using the simulation method, RMS values and balance, uh, balance representation using positive sequence model for the network, okay? We execute and now we are ready for the simulation. In this case, I am using the command simulation, the COMSIM, and we are running by five seconds this simulation. What I'm telling you is that we are running a time domain simulation during five seconds, and now let's execute, okay? The interesting thing here, if we go to the output window, you can see that initial conditions are calculated. You can see that here below, and then we have an event at t equals zero, okay? And the event is increasing, increasing the torque by 0 0.01 per unit. And then at, at 50 milliseconds, we have a reduction of uh, the torque, okay? Now, let's see, let's see the, let's see the, the value of the torque, okay? I have a plot here. And this plot is ready for my students. And this plot is called the power torque plot, okay? Because on the top of this plot, you can see that here we have the active power coming from this generator. And here below, we have the mechanical torque, okay? As you can see, as you can see in previous to zero, we have a steady state, and as you can see, the mechanical torque is 0.75 per unit. 
The mechanical torque here is 0 0.75. And then at t equals 0, we have an slightly increase. You can see that the torque is reaching 0 0.75-09988. That means that we increase the torque, slightly increase the torque, okay? Of course, when we increase the torque, we are exciting a change on the rotational speed of this synchronous machine. We will see that in a minute. But what you can see is between 0 and 0 0.05, between 0 and 0 0.05 seconds, 50 milliseconds, we have a slightly increase on the mechanical torque. And then at 0 0.05, we have a reduction and the torque is coming back similar to the initial value. And you can see over here that the torque is 0 0.74989898, okay? What I'm telling you is this very small increase in the torque is exciting some oscillation inside the power system. And that is my next step. Now we are sure that we have a very short, a very short uh, uh, torque increase. And if we go here to the plots, now it's the very important moment, okay? Because this plot is called delta omega. And what I am showing you here is basically the two important, the two important uh, state variables for the electromechanical model. On the top, here on the top, you can see in red color, we have the rotor speed, okay? You can see that the variable that we are uh, presenting in this plot is the variable at speed. And that is basically one a state variable of the electromechanical model, and that is the rotor speed. Here below, I will change the color. I will use blue color. And in blue color, we have the rotor angle, okay? And you can see in blue color, we have the rotor angle and we have we can see the oscillations over here. But the interesting part here, the very interesting part here is that we have here those oscillations. But you can see that the oscillations, they are extremely, extremely small. OK, you can see that the angle is reaching 13.219. And here there is going to 13.20 uh, okay? It's a very small, very small uh, change at the uh, rotor angle. And also it's happening the same for the angle, for the rotor speed, okay? You can see that the increase in the rotor speed, we have pre-contingency status. We can see here that the rotor angle, uh, the rotor speed is, is one. And then we can have here uh, the maximum rotor speed here is 1.000002. What I'm telling you is that this very small torque increase is just changing, slightly changing the rotor speed and of course it's making changes on the rotor angle what is my next step well my students they are extremely clever and they must know that you can see over here rotor speed and rotor angle both of them they are oscillating and this oscillation is a periodic oscillation when you have periodic oscillations you can use basic concepts and calculate the oscillation frequency. And that is extremely simple because if you remember, if you remember the concept of frequency for a periodic signal, well, the concept is extremely simple. Frequency is the inverse of the time period. And what you need to do is basically calculate the period of this oscillation and the inverse of that period will give you the frequency in hertz and that is what i will do now 
Now I am here in my presentation of PowerPoint because here it's extremely simple for me to show you the way that you can calculate the oscillation frequency, okay? And that is extremely simple. It's similar to the job that you have done before in the lab if if you if you took any class about uh, circuit analysis and you went to the lab and used an oscilloscope you must remember that if we are collecting signals using an oscilloscope we can calculate the frequency based on the period okay what i telling you what i telling you is that if you are here in this very specific a signal and this is the rotor speed okay for the rotor speed for the rotor speed you can see that we have uh, two two uh, peaks okay what I need to do first is I would like to select two consecutive peaks at this signal okay what I will do is I will take this peak and this other peak okay if I take two consecutive peaks, okay, two peaks here, two maximum values of this signal, I can take the time values, okay? And that is what I am doing here. We can have here, this is the time one, and this is the time zero. Using those values, using those values, what I will do, what I will do is, I know this, sorry, I know this value over here and this is the time this is the time uh, zero and I know this time and this is the time t1 okay now using those times I can calculate delta t and delta t to be honest delta t here the difference between the two peak time is the period of this signal the period of one alternating and periodic signal is basically the time that takes the signal to repeat again. And if we put the number together, if we if we put the number together, we can get that the we can get here that the period of this signal is 0 0.91 seconds. And calculating the frequency, we can get here the beautiful frequency, oscillation frequency of this signal. And the oscillation frequency for this very specific example is 1.0985 Hz. Okay? Something that is extremely exciting of this example, because we are using the classical model for the machine, the classic uh, model for the machine, is if we look over here below we have the rotor angle okay here at the top we have the rotor speed here below we have the rotor angle and we can do the same exercise okay we can calculate the period of the oscillation for the rotor angle and the period is the same 0 0.91 and using that period here we can calculate the frequency and voila, we have that the oscillation frequency is the same, 1.0985 Hz, okay? What I'm telling you is that now you have been able to calculate, now you have been able to calculate the oscillation frequency for those uh, signals for the rotor angle here at the top. Here we have the rotor angle and here we have the rotor speed okay and we have here the oscillation frequency for one signal and here for the other signal and that is perfectly fine okay at home at home i highly suggest that you calculate the damping okay how we define the damping well you can use the concepts that you learn in your uh, circuit labs okay and you must remember if we calculate the decrease in the amplitude of this signal what i telling you if you get here the amplitude decrease in the amplitude or the changes in the amplitude during the time of this signal well you can obtain the damping okay and that is my personal suggestion my personal suggestion is when you arrive at home 
have a look the methods to calculate the damping and I highly suggest at home that you do so, okay? Well, but now what is my next step? Well, my next step now is that I will use, I will use the, the classical model analysis in order to calculate the oscillation frequency for this very specific system. And that is my job in the coming video. Okay. Thank you for watching. I will see you at the next video. Thank you.